Hello and welcome. Welcome to Around the Town with Mark. I am Mark Whalen, your host. And yes, we're always glad that you tune in and visit with us. Well, by watching Around the Town with Mark, and I'm sure and hope that you do, you know that we love to bring you information on some of the wonderful things there are to see and do in our area, and there's certainly a lot of them. Today we're going to be talking about several very, very special things coming up. Back by popular demand, one of our favorite guests, <laughs> Leslie Evans, the director of the Avery Cophouse Museum, is here today. Mm -hmm. Well, Leslie, Hi. welcome back to Around the Town with Mark. Well, thanks ever so much for having me back. It's always fun to come and talk about Avery Cophouse and other doings in our neighborhood. We've got well, some fun things planned for well, June. Well, great. We're going to talk about all kinds of things then today. So let's let's start out by again introducing our our our, our visitors um, and my guests. Uh, a little bit of background of the Avery Cop House. Yeah, so the Avery Cop House is a historic house museum located at 154 Thames Street in Groton. So right on the banks of the Thames River, in the neighborhood known as Groton Bank, and so it's a really great historic neighborhood. And this house was lived in by many generations of the same family over the course of a little over 200 years. So it's a great um, time capsule, so to speak, of family life from just after the Revolutionary War up until just really into the 1960s even. So we, we use it as a teaching tool to show people how people were able to live in a house at that time, how they cooked, what they wore, how they um, took care of the landscape, and also what was going on in society around them. So different, um, you know, changes in household technology with the coming of electricity and indoor plumbing and the telephone, and then the automobile came, and all the while the harbor was a really active place with lots of different work um, going on there. So it's a, it's a nice way to be able to teach about local history. And that's good because one of the very special things about the Avery Cop House is even though it was built about 1800, you still, today you see mm -hmm. the mostly Victorian era of that, but yeah. yet you can still see parts of things going back to You can. Years. We have things in the house because it was passed down from generation to generation in the same family with everything in it, not just the building and the land, but all the contents as well. There are things in there going back 200 years, and then there are things that are 150 years old, and 100 years old, and 50 years old, all together. And it's important to mention that you didn't have to recreate any of these things. This all came as one package. <laughs> it did, and that's what makes it really wonderful as a museum from a historian's point of view. It's not a recreation. It's how people lived here. And all the things you see around you when you tour the house are original to it. So it, it's, it has a lot of authenticity. It's, re it's really um, special in that regard. And your season um, starts fairly soon, is that Well, correct? it has or started. We, it has? We, okay. we open for tours on Memorial Day weekend. Oh, wonderful. So people can come on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, anytime between 11 and 3, and have a guided tour of the house. And we also do have special events year-round. So we do have a, a full calendar of events that people can uh, learn about on our website or by giving us a call. Um, we're happy to mail them a calendar too if they prefer that. And is it uh, available for groups to reserve to, to bring school groups or yes. citizens in? Yes, that's an audience we're really anxious to serve. So okay. we do host school programs there. Also any kind of special interest group that wants to get together. It might be uh, it might be a children's group, but it also could be a senior citizens, or it could be a book club, or it could be a garden club. Any, any group that wants to come, we're really happy to have them visit us. All right. And uh, to find the information on, on how to do that, can we put up, maybe there we go, the, mm -hmm. the um, Avery Cop House website? AveryCopHouse.org is our website, and okay. our email is there as well, and our phone number. So any of those will do, and um, okay. any of us will be happy to help you. And your your website does that, does that give a little bit of a, a peek as to it uh, does what it the gives house some it gives some um, background history about the house some nice photographs of the interior and of the grounds around it and also information about our coming events can all be found there. All right. Well, would you like to start out with with maybe going through a little tour <laughs> sure. of the house? Sure. I would love to school? take 
take people inside just to give them a peek about what they might see. And I, I want to also say that this coming weekend, um, so Saturday, uh, the 10th of June, is Connecticut Open House Day. And that's a day that, okay. that is promoted throughout the state where a lot of historic house museums are open free or reduced admission. And uh, often with special programming going on that you wouldn't have every day. But it, the Avery Cop House is open um, free on, on Saturday, June 10th for Connecticut Open House Day. And I'll just take people through just to see a few rooms and give you a bit of an oh, please, idea of yes. what might, might, might be on view there and what they could expect to see. So uh, we'll start in the parlor if we can. And the parlor is the fanciest room in the house, and that's a room that's where important visitors would always be taken in there first. And the hope was um, to impress them with, with your beautiful uh, furniture and any decorative items that you might have on display. And those would all say something about the person who owned the house. It would show that either you were knowledgeable about art, or maybe you traveled to foreign countries and brought back souvenirs, or if nothing else, it would say that you could afford furniture like this. And, I was going to say, and, maybe a little bit of a, a little yes, bit of showing. That, it, it was uh, a way people showing showed off, off a little bit. <laughs> the way people might do nowadays with their car or with their, you know, having the latest phone or whatever it might be. This was a way to impress people in, in the 19th century. So formal visitors would come um, into the front door and be ushered into the parlor. If you... Um, were not a formal visitor, but were a tradesperson or um, a servant who worked in the house or one of their friends, you would go to the kitchen door. And um, next we can move on to the kitchen. And okay. the kitchen at the Avery Cop House is really my favorite room. Because when we do living history programs here, I play the role of the housekeeper here. And I love the kitchen. I love to show people how the kitchen was used. And it would have been a very active room from very early in the morning, six o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night. It would have been constantly in use either for cooking or cleaning. And that's, that's true today. Yes, either often. it, it seem often to always is. always congregate in the kitchen. The kitchen is really the, the heartbeat of the home. And, and this is where the servants would have um, taken all their meals at that little table by the window there. And, and of course, what we're seeing on our mm -hmm. screen, w when we're seeing those appliances, those appliances <laughs> were ones They've that were really been, used They every were. Day in the, house. the kitchen is intact as far as it, it still has its wood burning stove there. Um, it has all the furniture that the family had in there. and. Uh, it's a great place to be able to really get a feeling for what that, that was like. And we're in the process of restoring that stove to working order so that we can give cooking demonstrations oh, in there. Wonderful. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. But there's still a lot we can do um, even without the stove fired up. And we, we often offer classes about food preservation and how, how food was used um, how, and different things that we can um, show in the kitchen. And, and just other ways that people worked. So it, We take it, so many things for granted yeah. nowadays. It's so easy to just go oh, to the grocery store and put it in your refrigerator or your freezer, but it wasn't like that. It was not. Um, the season really played a strong role in what was available to you for cooking. So you would not, like in June, you would expect to have strawberries and you would revel in that and eat all you wanted and make jam so that you could bring them out in February and enjoy them that way. But you would know in July you were not going to have them anymore, and you wouldn't have them again till next June. Mm. So it was. It, people were very conscious of of the season and of the of of nature of the of what was going to be available to you, and um, and worked with that in a way that we're not used to doing now. And um, having new resources like our kit at the time we're portraying in our kitchen, which is about 1900. We did have electricity there, so there is electric light, but it's nothing as bright as we're used to now. And we did have running water, which was a huge innovation. Mm. So you can imagine the change that would make in the life of somebody who normally would have had to go out to a well to get water and carry it back in bucket by bucket. Now you could just turn a tap and have water come oh, how out. How revolutionary and, that yeah, must have been Yeah, that's extremely revolutionary, and not only cold water, but hot, too. Oh. So, <laughs> liberating, Yes, almost. it it was extremely liberating. So it's fun to talk to people about changes in household technology and how that influenced life. 
um, both for the people who were doing the work and for the people who were enjoying the fruits of those labors. Of course, servants were, they, were a, a big part. They were a necessary mm -hmm. part of a house like the Avery Cop House. And if we can um, go to the next slide, we can see one of the servants' bedrooms. These are on the third floor mm -hmm. in the Avery Cop House. And uh, we do a lot of programming regarding um, the, the people who worked in the house. That room looks fairly comfortable it, it looks, and reasonable. It looks quite reasonable room. and comfortable. Yeah. And this is actually the, the housekeeper's room, and it is as as uh, rooms for household help go, this was a very nice one. Uh, it does, you'll notice it has a radiator, so that meant it had heat in the winter. Not all servants' bedrooms who, had that. Who would have been in the, 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 the top of, of the servants? The cook housekeeper. And she would have ruled the roost there. Okay. And she would have had working under her a maid of all work who would be a younger woman usually. These, these women were almost always Irish immigrant. Um, women who were establishing themselves in a new country and having to learn new ways as they did that. The cook, housekeeper, someone who had attained those skills would tend to stay in a job longer because she could demand a higher wage mm -hmm. and have a stable situation. So when she found somewhere she liked, she would stay there. The younger women tended to come and go. They would, they would move on to work in a factory or maybe a store, or maybe they would get married. Okay. And so they were they, a, kind of an ever-changing cast of characters. And there was also a man responsible for taking care of the grounds outside, but he did not sleep on the third floor where the women were. No men were allowed to go up there. Oh, okay. So he had a room up above the carriage house. So, uh, but they... They worked behind the scenes, really, and and were fairly anonymous for a long time. Now, in recent years, there's been a lot of interest in learning more about servants. Sometimes popular television shows will will make people get interested in that, mm -hmm. like Downton Abbey did that. Right. Yeah. And um, that's been a really great thing for historic house museums because these are spaces and stories that were really relegated to the side uh, for a long time, and now people are interested in it. It's them. good to mention, too, you mentioned the carriage house, that mm -hmm. the carriage house still exists. It's still there. And you've it, got a beautiful, <laughs> a large piece of property that yes, people can Yes, we do. We have, we have three acres of grounds at the Avery Cop House. Uh, it's built onto a pretty steep hillside, but there are three acres there, some magnificent trees. The carriage house is where we have our office and our archives are okay. stored there. And we have meeting space there, which by the way, we do make available to other nonprofits oh, in wonderful. the area. If you're looking for a place to have a small meeting that can accommodate about a dozen people, we're happy to share that space. Wonderful. So, um, it, but it, it, it is an interesting you know, way to, to look at a property through the, through the eyes of the servants who work there, not just mm -hmm. often with, with museum houses, the best, fanciest houses are preserved with the best furniture and the best mm -hmm. clothes and so on. But there was a, a whole other side to life that Certainly. is also really interesting. Certainly. And many of us have ancestors who came as immigrants and worked as household servants uh, when they were first establishing themselves. So it's kind of a nice way to be able to touch, um, almost touch what your ancestors might have done Certainly. and see that. Certainly. So we have a lot of people that do enjoy learning about that. But on Connecticut Open House Day, we also will have some special things going on for families. It's a family friendly event, so we want to show um, you know, we can show some fun and games, too. So, um, so it wasn't all work and no play. Yeah, and so it's both inside and outside? It's inside and outside, weather permitting. This June has been a bit of a challenge in regard to weather. But um, if it's a nice day, we, we love to bring out some old-fashioned toys. They're really simple toys, but they're lots of fun. And just to be out in the fresh air and, and play with them. Children were expected to work as well. They always had a lot of household chores to do and were expected to be contributing members of their household, but they had time for fun as well. And so we like to share that too. And we'll even have a few things for people to taste. Oh, wow. So it's a little bit of everything. It's a, it's a little bit of everything. For and all, all ages. All ages, family friendly, com completely free. And there are 
um, other houses in our neighborhood that are open, other sites that people can visit. So if you want to make a, sometime on Connecticut Open House Day, it's fun to go to a, a place that has two or three or four places yeah, open and try and see them all. Right now, yeah. yeah, so this is the Ebenezer Avery House and it's just a few blocks away from us on the grounds of Fort Griswold. Wonderful. And they will be open and um, showing what life would have been like at the time of the Revolutionary War. So this is a wonderful opportunity wonderful. to visit the Ebenezer Avery House. And then you might even push on up the hill to Fort Griswold. And, oh um, yes, everybody <laughs> loves to visit Fort Griswold. There's a great museum there at Fort Griswold and you can also climb to the top of this monument and see out into Long Island mm, Sound. You can beautiful. see Block Island. You can look wow. inland and see you know, way up the river. Wow. It's a great, great vantage point if you feel up to you know, making the climb. Yeah. I've done it and it really is a fascinating, fun experience. So I hope all my viewers are writing down their calendars <laughs> right now. Connecticut Open House Day coming up this that Saturday. Saturday, June 10th, yes. and we'll be open from 11 to 3 for that. Oh. And then if we have time, I'd love to tell you about another event we please, have coming up. Please do. So, okay, on um, Friday, June 16th, we'll be giving a a harbor-based history tour on the water. Oh, so people this love is, the water. Yeah, so this is going to be on board the water taxi, and it's a 90-minute tour narrated by um, me and by Jim Streeter, our Groton Town oh, historian. Wow. And so he is so wonderful to listen to, and we'll be taking people out on the taxi, going up and down the river, both sides of the river, and um, talking about things like the bridge that crosses the river. Mm -hmm. We can... Um, see a picture of that and there, there have been numerous yeah. bridges there and yeah. uh, talking about how the river was first spanned by a bridge and what it was like before that. So we'll be um, focusing on the ferries that used to cross the river and then different kinds of bridges that have come and gone. And then um, we'll be looking mm -hmm. at New London going a, across to New London yeah. and looking at the skyline there and there talking you go. about the ferry terminal, that's the beautiful right. old train station. All the things that are going Wonderful. on now and, and what happened in, there in the past. So thinking about New mm. London being burned during the Revolutionary War right. and, and how it rebuilt itself and then the whaling industry that was so important there and we'll be um, kind of going down the river towards Fort Trumbull, which I think we have a picture of here yes. and talking about what Fort Trumbull was like over time, how it was a small fort to start with and then expanded for the Civil War and then different ways that that land was used, and of course used a, up through the Cold War. Another beautiful museum there as well. Yes, yeah. and it's a great place to visit. And um, across the river we have Fort Griswold and we'll be talking a little bit more about that. But then going down river further we'll be seeing three lighthouses and Ledge Light is one of them. We'll see New London Harbor Light, and mm. we will also be able to see Avery Point Lighthouse right at the at Wonderful. the very at the mouth of the river. And then working our way back, we'll be passing Electric Boat, where um, submarines are built. And if we're lucky, you never know, we might see a sub um, on the river with us. But Jim Streeter will be giving a lot of information about the shipbuilding industry that was so prominent for so long in our in our region. And are, still is. Are reservations required? Uh, they advised? are. Yes, uh, they're, they are required because the taxi, the water taxi mm -hmm. can only hold so many passengers. Okay. So if, if people are interested in that, they can call us at the Avery Cop House and make a reservation. The tickets are $20 per person. Okay. And this, uh, this first tour is on um, Friday, June 16th at 7 o'clock. But if you're not able to make that one, um, we are going to be doing one in July and one in August as well. So and there will be other opportunities. Begin and end um, uh, at the the Groton site. They do. They will be leaving from the Fort Street Landing, okay. which is um, right at the intersection of Thames Street and Fort Street. And there's, in there is uh, ample free parking there. There as is. Well, there's a is small um, par parking lot just about half a block from there at the corner of. Latham and Thames Street that is a city parking, so it's free. And there's parking on the street as well. What a wonderful opportunity for people. We are yeah. all about water. We're, and we're really excited about it because it, having the water, t the Thames River Heritage Park and, and the water taxi being a component of that is just a wonderful addition to our region. And the water taxi 
um, operates Friday, Saturday, and Sunday all summer. So it's a, a great way to introduce people to it, and hopefully they, they'll they ride it more than once during the sure. course of well, the summer. I've said this before on the show, and I'll say it again, is that, that uh, we look across on either side of the river to the other side, and it seems so close, <laughs> but yet so far. And for most everyone, the only way to cross is to go on 95 over the bridge. I but know. this is a great opportunity so it, to, it is. to take a ride across on the boat. It takes us back to a time when there was a ferry going back and forth every 20 minutes, you know, every day. Mm -hmm. And how wonderful that must have been. Um, so sometimes advances aren't always <laughs> so great when you that's, you that's know true. you get into a lot of traffic and and construction and how to find a place to park and so on but on the water taxi you don't have to worry about that you can just get on and get off it goes um, in a triangular pattern between Fort Street Landing in Groton and City Pier in New London and Fort Trumbull mm. and so and it's pet for you can bring your dog on there um, if you want to get on and go for a walk over at Fort Trumbull or go over and have an ice cream in New London or whatever you want to do, it's, 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 a, it's really fun. It's a great opportunity mm -hmm. to, to experience yeah. our history it is. and have a boat yard, a boat ride, and mm -hmm. in the summertime, the, the breezes and, and, and that yeah. water experience. It's a great way to be on the water in any case, but we hope if people are interested in learning more about the history, particularly of our harbor, and want to see it from the water, which is the, really the best way to see Certainly. it, then hopefully they'll join us for one of our water taxi tours. And well, again, um, the website uh, and your email right there, mm -hmm. if they want any information or to sign up for that tour, we can please help them out. go to that uh, website or give them a call. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. And, well, please tell us more. Well, I'm thinking ahead now to July. Okay. Um, the, some of the things we can talk about. Um, on July 1st, we have a children's program at the Avery Cop House, which is a, a fairy garden party. Oh. So we will have fairies and fairy houses all throughout our garden and special activities for, for children to be able to make crafts and, and have a tea party. And that's really lots of fun. And so um, children can come either by themselves or with their favorite grown-up and, and enjoy a few hours in, in a magical way in our garden. I was just going to say, it sounds magical. It really and is. It's like it's, a very it's, wholesome, old-fashioned way is. of it's, having fun. It's a simple, pure, simple, yes. gentle, fun way to spend a a couple hours in a beautiful kind place. Of a lost. And uh, it, it's really joyful. So, yeah. we, so we enjoy that very much. And um, then we will have another water taxi tour mid July. Okay. And then um, I know there are other exciting events going on. Um, in Groton. Maybe you'd like I'd, to tell a little bit well, about Art on Groton Bank. Thank you for that. I would love to mention Art on Groton Bank, Saturday, July 15th, on the grounds of the Bill Memorial Library, which is a beautiful historic library up really close to the Avery Cop House Museum. And we just have an outdoor art festival. And uh, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Artists come out, jewelry, photographs, all kinds of great things. We have interactive activities for everybody, delicious food, live music, all kinds of good, all kinds of good stuff. It sounds so it's, like it's lots a, of fun. It's a really fun day. So thanks for allowing me to have a little bit of a plug. Well, we definitely want to encourage that. And, and, and I think Any that's... visitors that come to Art and Groton Bank, we would encourage them to take a short walk and visit your Avery Cup House Museum, of well, course. I hope so. Yeah, great, wonderful, wonderful. Well, we've got about five minutes left. Is there a few things that I, I we haven't touched on that that you'd like to uh, like to mention? Well, I I can, you know, I'll, I maybe you'll have me back and I'll talk more about this when we get closer to the time. But sure. just thinking ahead to the summer for people who are interested in gardening, and especially in herbs and how those plants were used in the past, we do have a program on August sixth that's a a, a hands-on workshop called Herbs for Hearth and Health. And people can come and learn about herbal medicine as it was practiced 100 years ago and for many centuries before that, and, and create some things themselves that they'll be able to take home and, and just learn about plants from that perspective. Mm. That's one of the programs in our kitchen this summer. And, Wonderful. and so we'd love to have people join us for that. And you, again, can find out more about that on our website. Mm -hmm. So we are gradually working to restore our gardens at the Avery Cop House. They 
once had pretty extensive gardens there. Mm. And we have restored a Victorian shade garden. And we do have some wonderful, very old trees there that we're um, going to be labeling oh, with wonderful. botanical information. And we do have a small herb garden that we use for our programs. And we have a Girl Scout troop that meets with us every Wednesday, and they have a vegetable garden there. So they're oh, learning wonderful. about how to grow and use vegetables. And, and that's really exciting to me to be able to introduce children to gardening and see them get excited about that. What a, what a rich experience the Avery Cop House Museum is. <laughs> Between the, the yeah. beautiful structure, the, 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 the contents, the history, the grounds. I mean, you've, got a, you've just got There's a little There's a lot bit, to explore. Lot. There yeah. really is. And um, we love to show it off to people and, and introduce people to something new or have them come back and visit something that becomes an old favorite to them. Certainly, certainly. And how long does your season run? Well, we're open for our, our regular Friday, Saturday, Sunday tours until mid-October. Okay. But we do have programs year-round. So okay. I think uh, you have, you yeah, have uh, so a Christmas programs we and things do. like that we, where you decorate the house? Mm -hmm. We have lectures. We have workshops. And then we have, as you mentioned, holiday programs where we the whole house is decorated for Christmas and and we have a, a Christmas open house and also um, a performance piece mm. uh, uh, featuring a, a, a really talented actress who does a, a, a reading of, a, of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol um, that she has done now for about five years every year for us, and she has a real following there. So there's always something on offer. We all try and tie it into our local history in mm -hmm. some way mm -hmm. um, because that's what our mission is, of course. But there are many, many ways to do that. So Wonderful. between you know, guided tours or fun workshops or, or educational lectures, there's always something going on. Well, well it's, it's, it sounds just, just very, very, very rich with, with so many good stuff. And I, I really appreciate well, that you do all these wonderful <laughs> things and, and create this experience for us. I'm for really us. lucky. I feel like some days when I go to work, I just feel so grateful that I have Surely. a job where I can um, indulge my interest in history, but also share it with other people. And, and it is a great place to be. And we also really want to be a valued part of our neighborhood. It's important to us to make our community a better place if we can, any way we, we can contribute to that. And I think there are a lot of people that are always working towards that in our community. So we're right. happy to be a part of that. Well, Leslie, I want to thank you again for being my guest today oh, and sharing again, with Mark. us the experience of the Avery Cup House Museum. Uh, and we will have you back again very soon. So <laughs> thanks. Thank you very All much. All right. I'll look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, again, I want to thank my viewers for tuning in today. Be sure to put the Avery Cup House Museum on your calendar is a wonderful, exciting thing to do. Also, of course, put Art and Groton Bank on your calendar for Saturday, July 15th. If you're an artist, an artisan, a photographer, if you make jewelry, we have space available for you. So please contact me. Um, my, my contact information is here or go to artandgrotonbank.org. We'd love to have you. So again, thank you for tuning into Around the Town with Mark and enjoy all these events. And we're going to see you again on this show very soon.